Herzlich willkommen zu Teil 2 unseres Interviews mit Andreas Kleinschmidt. Andreas Kleinschmidt ist ja Executive Coach und Moderator bei sehr hochrangigen Events. Es war ein ganz spannendes Gespräch über die Branche des Coachings und deren Zukunft. Teil 1 gab es ja schon und heute hört ihr Teil 2. Viel Spaß. So, welcome to part 2 of our discussion with Andreas Kleinschmidt. He's an Executive Coach, a Public Speaking Coach and he's also a Moderator of High Profile Events. And in the first part of our discussion, we talked about what coaching actually is, who could benefit from coaching, and how you can see actual results from coaching. And I think now in part two, we want to have Andreas's outlook on the coaching industry as a whole. Hi, Andreas. Thanks for being here for part two of our interview. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Tulam. Thanks for having me. So I think when people think about coaching, some people might have seen this documentary on Netflix with uh, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, I am not your guru. And especially a public figure like Tony Robbins is kind of controversial because some people think he's like a god and think, okay, he saved my life and he turned my life around. And others think, hey, this guy is kind of weird. He's like a snake oil salesman. He's just in there for the money. How do you think about a figure like maybe Tony Robbins, not necessarily in particular, but about this notion that people maybe see coaches as some kind of gurus or also have a lot of mistrust i get both it's deserved because the industry has not clarified on its boundaries on a set of agreed rules compared with psychotherapy very different thing but there's similarities right two people sit down talk or there's a group and one person and in psychotherapy As I was young, anybody could come up with any technique and there was no empirics behind it, so no clear studies that show evidence. And over many, many decades, we now have an industry that's regulated, that has clarity around how much is reasonable to pay for the service. In coaching, right now, you get everything, extremes to the left, extremes to the right, so it can in some cases feel a bit guru-like or almost have taste of like, oh, wow, is that a sect leader? Some very charismatic coaches. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it might go into consulting and, and be a very narrow scope. So the industry isn't ready yet. And because it isn't ready yet, we will see some extremes, but there will have to be changes and the changes will come. My expectation is that because there can be some overshoots right now, people going around with unproven methodologies or sometimes, I mean, coaching can harm people if you just do it in the wrong way, we might see a backlash. There's such a big wave of coaching. It's so fashionable. Everybody wants to be a coach. It has to break at some point. And I think that will be a healthy point and help the industry mature. But I think it's quite fascinating to see the different approaches to coaching because on the one hand, like say on the one end of the spectrum, like for me, the coach is more like the say therapist. So very, say serious, maybe with very good training, very good methodologies, who knows their boundaries and who is more like a say neutral observer, helps people clarify their thinking. And on the other end of the spectrum, more like the guru the motivational guy who is giving all sorts of life advice and to be honest i find both approaches pretty good personally i enjoy tony robbins so even though i think that i have pretty clear thinking around that i'm not like following any kind of sect leaders i do find him very interesting from a business point of view but i actually have learned a lot from people like tony robbins so i do enjoy that a lot and also when i follow all your posts you're yeah. much closer to the charismatic guru you sharing thoughts you share like your new diet and this is more on the advice side and it has a fun touch yeah. i think you're probably more on the guru side for me i don't know if guru but i guess ad advice giving but not with the uh, tony robbins charisma i guess but i think both is kind of very valid and i think for some people obviously you don't want to go in bed with the uh, snake oil salesman but i think sometimes even people who are kind of in a rut in life or who don't know where to go it can be very helpful to have somebody very motivational with high energy uh, instead of just having a guy who is like say toned down a little bit different people need different things at different stages of their lives i think coaching will benefit from more clarity around what coaching should be considered and while there's such a huge buzz it's probably difficult to hammer that out maybe one thing i guess if you take the analogy probably it's not a good analogy but let's say in the medical field You have the so-called general practitioner or the house arts and you go to that person 
And when he sees that you need some more specialized help, he will send you somewhere. And so maybe there's like some kind of say more general coach and he will kind of do it like the initial diagnosis. And then he sees, okay, you need like public speaking support or more on the motivational side or emotional side or more psychotherapy side, then this person will refer you to some experts or specialists. Nice idea, coaching triage. We could build a company, right? Mm -hmm. We do that. Could be an online assessment mm -hmm. and then refer to the right coach. And we will see things like that. What does the future of coaching hold in store for us? There will be a change of who provides coaching, I expect, and a change of who receives it. And I sum it up as democratization and in a weird way a flip side of it industrialization of coaching and what do i mean with it more people will get coaching there will be more offerings for people who are not prepared to pay a couple of hundred dollars euros for a session but much less and then at the same time there will be people who are ready to provide this service at such a fee level. But mm -hmm. I think this is actually a good thing because I think so many people could benefit from coaching. It seems to me that, as I said before, like only the 0.0001% of the population do get it. And then maybe it's already too late because they're already in their midlife crisis or they have already made a lot of mistakes in both their private life or professional career. And why shouldn't they get this kind of support earlier? And this is also why I personally, I like all sorts of self-improvement books and stuff like that, because they do make you ask a lot of questions like, hey, um, I don't know, how would you evaluate different areas in your life? What are your goals and all sorts of stuff like that, uh, where I feel that obviously it's not as good as a real life coach, but it's accessible to everyone at a fraction of the price. Yeah. So do I, do I go by bus or do I go by taxi? And right now as you mentioned like oh coaching isn't that for ceos and then you have the people with lots of gray hair providing them coaching and there is a lot of that and there is something to be said in favor of life experience for coaching at the same time clean clear non-directional coaching which just you know follows the technique rather than building on intuition that also influences maybe the bits of advising People with minimal training can already deliver some effective coaching. And I want to take that further. Yeah. Here is what I would love to see. I would love to see a world. I would love to see companies. I would love to see communities that can do without professional coaches. Over time, I would love the coaching profession to go away. Why? So you have the desire to become unemployed. <laughs> yeah, well, then I have to think about something new. Maybe I get some coaching, but here's what I mean. I would like coaching to go away because coaching should be, could be a core quality of human communication. If you dissect what goes into some good coaching, core elements are two ears, one mouth, use them proportionally, more listening, mm -hmm less speaking, empathy, putting yourself into the other person's shoes and genuine human care. More of that in daily interactions, there would automatically be more of that space for your very best thinking. So you mean like if just regular people listened more, that that would kind of already help a lot of people and uh, which would then reduce the need for like actual coaching? It's quite basic and banal, isn't it, right? We should all listen more, shouldn't we? But yes, we should. And who knows, maybe it triggers more coaching because people go like, oh, wow, Eureka, this is gorgeous. By the way, not only for the person being listened to, it is a completely different quality of conversation when you're the listener. But it's it's not just you know a, a pipe dream and we'll all be coaches. I'm like, we see already actual companies that are earning money today change the management style. It's happening. And a great case study for me is Microsoft who at the end of the bomber area, it was like cloud computing was coming and oh, so many changes. But when you listen to folks who worked at Microsoft at the time, it was all very command control and we followed the script. And the and then with Nadella, a new style has emerged. And where did that style come from? Some more of a coaching style, leaders that listen, leaders that help their employees work out in a very, very fast moving, changing space to get to the right answer. Where did that come from? Well, it came from the top, yeah. from the style of Nadella. And we're not just seeing it at Microsoft. And that has big implications for managers today. 
you're a manager today, middle management in particular, be prepared that what's going to be expected of you in five, 10 years time is going to be likely to be very different from what you deliver today. So do managers also need to be coached or need to become coaches themselves? Or what do you mean by that? What I mean is most likely we will see more companies that reward a coaching management style. And it doesn't mean that we stop setting objectives for teams. No, that's mm -hmm. becoming more important. But teams will have more autonomy. Individuals have more autonomy to find their solutions. Old world, command control, mm -hmm. clear scripts, playbooks, how to make money in this company. Mm -hmm. And the boss then monitors you and rewards you or punishes you if you don't follow it or you're not efficient in following it. But it's your topic every day in your mm -hmm. blogs and in, in your posts. Well, it doesn't work like that anymore. It's complex. Mm. Business models change, threats change, opportunities. Change. So coaching as once a tool or rather mindset of a manager is much more suitable for this world mm -hmm. because let's go back to what it's all about. It helps the employees create their best thinking. And that's what they need to flourish in this world. Mm -hmm. I think especially in the field of say high school laborers, I mean, most of these people, they know what to do and they don't need anyone to tell them their deadlines or they will be very pissed off if they're being micromanaged all the time. And so I guess they just need somebody to support them. And I guess it kind of reminds me of what's happening in education where you don't need a teacher to tell you about geography or math. Like any smart student can go on YouTube and f figure this uh, stuff out themselves. They rather need some kind of coach as well who will give them some guidance on what to study, maybe where some weaknesses are, where some opportunities are, but you don't need somebody to transfer knowledge because we have other yeah, means to do that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the other factor, right? We don't need somebody to explain the world to us. We can, whatever data we need, but what data do we need? Mm. How do we use it? Mm. Why do we use it? Those are the big questions. That's where coaching is helpful. Yeah. I'm always thinking there should be some kind of app, like with some k kind of smart AI, that I can go to in whatever kind of problem I have, whatever kind of, say, period in my life I'm in, that can then help me and can be my coach slash therapist slash best friend. So whatever. And, so, and maybe lover, well, I'm, why not? Right? Right. And then, no, but let's say, um, I mean, joking. there are different uh, situations in my life. Let's say I'm starting a company. There's tons of questions that I will have, not just say on the business side, but also, hey, how do I cope with the pressure, with the expectation? Um, both of my f investors, of myself, of my employees and stuff like that. Then maybe a new situation, I just lost my job or I'm no longer motivated to do my current job, whatever. So many different situations. And most people, A, obviously they can't afford a coach or they will turn to some self-help books, which sometimes can be super helpful, but a lot of people don't even know like where to look for that. How would you go about building such an app that gives really good advice that can kind of replicate at least some of the functions of a coach. If I knew how to go about it, I'd be building it right now. <laughs> and a couple of people right now are trying to figure out how to build a good coaching app. And so far, I haven't seen the final version of it, if you will, the one that works. And it will take a couple of years, maybe longer. It's it's difficult. What do we currently see on the market? It's using AI more around specific skills. And that's where I expect AI to kick in first. So think public speaking. Um, you can train a machine to count how many pauses you make, how long your pause, how fast you speak. And, all these things, and then you get metrics. Mm -hmm. What the machine doesn't do yet is explain to you well and in an individualized way what these metrics mean to you and maybe cajole you into trying something different and giving you fun in the... So AI is slowly coming to the industry and I expect it to enhance first, especially with skills and then, hey, predictions about the future who knows maybe in 10 years the machine will do it but it might be a much much slower and more gradual process but let's say if i was your coaching client in real life i guess there's like a set of questions that you would ask me first in order to learn more about me and then also to help me clarify my thinking 
and couldn't an app do lots of the same things where we have some kind of onboarding process. Hey, who are you? How old are you? What do you do? How happy are you at the moment? What are some of the issues that you're dealing with right now? And then depending on whether I picked door A, B or C, then there's a follow-up of very, very good questions that will help me reflect more on those things. Maybe even link me to some kind of video like, hey, if you're dealing with this, have a look at this because this is very inspirational and some, something like that. Could you kind of replicate that in a way? There are already some tasks where machines are better than humans in the space and others where they're not. Here's an example. Machines have become extremely good at reading your mood, micro expressions and combinations of micro expressions of different mm -hmm. muscles. And then yeah. how does Tulam feel right now? And in many situations, they would be better than the human coach. Wouldn't it be great if we could use that power of the machine and somehow find a way to infuse it into a human coaching settings. There are other areas where the machine currently is lousy. Let's take a different example. Have you tried learning a f foreign language in your life? Yeah, a couple of times, yeah. A couple of times. Have yeah. you tried it just doing it online? I've used apps like Duolingo, which are fine, I guess, for vocabulary and maybe not so great for actual conversation. Yeah, because that's about interactions. And a lot of coaching is also about how does the coachee, the person that receives coaching, interact with the world, right? If we lived alone in this world, would we need coaching? We just do our thing, there's no one else, but mm. we live on a planet with 7.7 .7 billion people. Mm. So it helps one to have another human being to deal with topics around interactions and two, Let's go back to the example with the gym. Working out on your own, that's great. But do you always have the discipline to, okay, one hour. Oh no, I'll do more. But some people just pay someone else to stand there and say, go, keep going, do more. So having another human being in the room can increase tremendously the yeah. degree of focus, motivation, and yeah. accountability. Yeah. Personally, I think I would find it great to have like a 80-20 approach where I guess I would do 80% of the coaching on my own, let's say with some very good guided questions, with some homework, where the coach wouldn't be really able to help me because he would just sit there and I would pay a lot of money for that. But then after having done my homework, I would be really well prepared for the actual session with the coach and then we can build, uh, build on that. I think in some areas of coaching for some objectives, this is exactly what we will see. And I am so excited to go into this world where coaching is enhanced through technology, AI, where it truly makes a difference. And it will mean a lot of adaptation on the side of coaches, more than on the side of clients. I can't wait. I can't wait. Let's build something to love. Yeah. Let's, let's work yeah, it let's out. Let's do it, yeah. Okay, so that's the final episode of the podcast. We no longer have time to do this. Sorry, we're busy. Yeah, that's we're building it. this up. Right. So now if we look bigger picture so we go away from coaching now for a second and we talk say about the future of work and the skills that we need to be successful in the future and then there's always this talk about hey um do we need the hard skills or the soft skills do we need iq or eq do we need to train the left side of the brain or the right side of the brain uh, what are some of your thoughts on that especially since we talked about things like empathy emotional intelligence, active listening and stuff like that. I mean, it's obvious that these are necessary things, but are you just born with them? Can you actually learn them? How should parents, schools and companies go about training people to get better in those areas? So much, much bigger question. How is the future of work going to look like? And I just see some of the trends. One of the biggest that Of course, everybody is talking about right now what is machine learning, what artificial intelligence going to do. And maybe, maybe just as steam power and then electricity replaced human muscle power or muscle power of animals, now many of the tasks that are currently done by this computer between our two ears would be done more efficiently by silicone-based computers or quantum computers if things go the way we want them to go. And what does that mean for the future of work? That would mean a lot for the future of work, depending on how many tasks are done better by artificial intelligence. What would that mean? Probably 
a labor market that's going to be more split into relatively low paid tasks which are hard to automate think cleaning mm -hmm. we, we don't have the ultimate cleaning robot think elderly care so a lot of manual tasks like this machine like this hand is just amazing we can't build anything like that yet but that is going to be one thing. then we're going to see a lot of really very well paid complex tasks and those will require a lot of nimble thinking and that will requ they will require a lot of collaboration they will require a lot of people skills and of course understanding the subject matters but not only will we be able to look everything up mm. in wikipedia google whatever no we might actually just throw questions at an ai and and use machine learning to solve problems so if we indeed get that split labor market it's tough because what happens to that huge chunk of jobs that are paid somewhere around the median pay level of the country, if that goes either up or down, then we're completely unprepared to manage this change. We might need to res distribute more money. So it's, it might be messy. And actually, it's not just the median jobs. I mean, even financial analysis, Excel spreadsheet analysis, stuff that investment bankers are doing, McKinsey management consultants, radiologists. So it's even like at the, say, top 1% of jobs that are very analytical nowadays, where we can easily see a future where machines can do that a lot better. Good point. The radiologist, when you look at it, um, let's take the example. A large part of it is just looking at these images. And can a machine do that? In many cases, very well, and help the radiologist today already to come to a better diagnosis more quickly, more accurate. But is that all a radiologist does? There's also the moment when you talk to the patient and share your findings, your diagnosis. And so that's where you need the human skills. So what we see in this example with a radiologist, AI doesn't just you know take whole jobs and make them obsolete. In some cases it will, but here it's more like tasks of jobs that fall away. And the tasks that remain tend to be tasks which are more about human interactions, about working with others together. And that is an area where coaching can be helpful. So in a way to make that transition, I would expect coaching to play a growing role. So more machine learning means we need to become better at doing the more human, the more creative tasks better. That's where coaching can help as well. And if there's somebody in the audience who wants to get into coaching as a career, is that something you would recommend or do you think it's super competitive already? Uh, do you think there's a lot of opportunity? How do you think about that? The short answer is yes to all of your <laughs> all of your statements all of your questions if you want to do coaching try it out do an experiment or almost controlled experiment get a book or two find maybe a short course that isn't very expensive practice what you learn early on with friends over a coffee hey can i do i give you some free coaching or give me give me a small amount of money and, and try it out. That's how I did it. I had a lot of practice clients when I did my own uh, coaching course. And by doing the experiment, you will soon see how it feels, what's ready, how easy is it for you to find clients. A lot of people, I talk to friends, acquaintances at a party. What do you do? I'm a coach. Oh, interesting. I was thinking about being a coach. What's the advice? Well, first of all, I listen to them, ask questions, coachy style, <laughs> but... You don't always want to coach in life or at a party or in your relationship. So then it gets to the advice bit. And I always suggest don't just make your plan. I want to be a coach. This is how I'm going to do it. And then execute. I quit my job. And on the following day, I'm a coach now. Usually it doesn't work that way. The best thing you can do is try it out. And while you're doing what you're doing at the moment, start ramping it up a bit and see how nicely it flows if it works really well great at some point move on leave and that's also what happened to me i had a full-time job as a uh, spokesperson for a german company and i talked to my employer can i try a coach? yeah okay it's okay if you work a little bit on the side and then at some point i was flying from munich to the us twice a month and i was i had to make a decision And that decision at that point was an easy one to make. 
Okay, awesome. Okay, great interview, Andreas. Thank you so much. So we learned more about the coaching industry, also the future of the coaching industry. So we learned that there more people could get coaching through maybe some cool apps. So we're going to definitely build this AI-powered uh, coaching app that you want coaching to become not obsolete but less necessary if people just in normal life would just listen more to each other and maybe show more empathy. And maybe finally, where can people find you and how you can you help them? Very easy. Go on the website down there and send me a message and we'll talk. You tell me what you think you need and then we'll see how I can help you, if I can help you. And there's somebody else who can help you better. Trust me, I'll send you that way. Okay, awesome, Andreas. Thank you.